Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host D-Day bringing you Let's Play Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode. If you're in a hurry, hover over the red progress bar for chapters and don't forget to smash like to show your appreciation. This will be my second run through of this mod pack, so be sure to subscribe for more modded Minecraft every Sunday at 11 a.m. What mod pack do you wanna see? Comment down below and if you're ready, then let's play with D-Day. All right, guys, so how to find Underground Dragons Ice and Fire mod. Uh, I went ahead and I made some greenhouse glass with the Ender Lily that we found earlier, vein mining uh, grass. Also, I figured out a way to uh, produce endstone, and uh, I will talk about that later in the episode, uh, since I want this episode to be about the underground dragons that I have uh, already prepared and advanced for us. Let's see, these guys, okay, they just didn't render out. But yeah, I'll talk about the uh, greenhouse glass and the ender pearls uh, at the end of the episode. So there's two ways to find underground dragons. Uh, one of them is the completely normal way of uh, finding them by luck. So if you are walking around exploring the lands and uh, you walk over a dragon's den it will actually roar at you so it's one of those luck things where if you're just bare bones running around uh, looking for a uh, dragon den an underground one uh, when you get the mining debuff specifically because when the dragon roars you'll get a debuff i'll show that later in the episode as well that means that you are very close to a, an underground dragon which uh, i have already let's see saved up seven underground dragons for you guys for this episode so we're gonna take out seven underground dragons hopefully one or more of them will have baby dragon eggs because I really do want to have tamed dragons tamed baby dragons and uh, also I never talked about the ender book here is the recipe for the ender book it is ender pearls and a block of emerald so ender pearls at the end of the episode I'll talk about how I conquered that no problem uh, I believe it was episode 2 where I talked about conquering emeralds no problem but then also all three of these ender books that I have I've gotten from uh, villages from raiding villages so one of them is my dedicated waypoints so that I can be lazy and just teleport between my sorting facility and my kitchen <laughs> and then this one is uh, specifically for YouTube for the series I have uh, check marks uh, waypoints set so I can teleport and uh, let's go ahead and jump into one item. So the mod pack that you're using may or may not have the scanner inside of it. Uh, this mod pack, uh, Enigmatica 2 Expert, has the scanner. So let me show you guys the recipe since I made it already. Iron, nether quartz, gold, iron bars. Super duper simple to make. You also need to make these blank scanner modules, which is... Uh, green dye, so three pieces of smelt cactus, gold nuggets, clay, easy, easy peasy. This stuff's easy. Uh, then also, I tried out rare ores because I thought, hey, scanning for emeralds would be a great way to find a dragon's den because emeralds are all over the 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 outside ring of the uh, dragon den. But then I decided that this one's not really that accurate. So I went and, uh, let's see, let me just hover over this and hit U. Let me click on it and hit U. There we go. I went with scanner module block. And uh, what you do is you make this item, you hold it in your inventory, and then you right click uh, the block that you wanna scan for. So to open up the scanner, you have to shift right click and you can put uh, your extra ones down here and you can put the active ones up here. You can only have three active ones. So the one I have right now is a scanner module block. I have and then I have two scanner module range upgrades. So the range upgrades are a blank one with an ender pearl. 
Uh, this will increase the range of scans, but also increase the amount of energy it costs per scan, which isn't a problem at all. So this scanner block module, what you do is you find the block that you want to scan, which in uh, my case, it's oak chests. You hold down shift, you right click, and it sets itself configured block oak chest. And then what you do is you shift right click the scanner. Wait, that's the crossbow, let me load it. And you put your modules in here. And then you put, like I said, you can put the inactive ones down here. And I also have another one that is configured to magnesium ore. This way I can also scan for uh, nuclear craft veins if I, uh, if, I, if, I, if I need to, if I want to. And then, like I said, I tried out the rare ore ones for emeralds, but uh, it's kind of, it, it works better if you scan for oak chests. You can also hit dungeons that way as well. We've got sunset coming in, let's sleep. Let me harvest the first four again because uh, the greenhouse glass makes these guys grow like crazy. As you can see, it hasn't been that long and we already, we have a lot of ender lilies and you guys saw, I just picked up a bunch of ender lilies uh, on camera. So I'll, at the end of the episode, I'll knock out the rest of the uh, industrial hemp and fill in the rest with uh, endstone and with ender lilies. And uh, I'll show you guys how to do the, uh, the endstone. Pretty simple. Now that we have the scanner, let's go ahead and jump from underground dragon to underground dragon. Let's go ahead, take out dragon number one. So like I said, I walked above the uh, overworld on the ground and every single time I came across a uh, an underground dragon roaring at me, I marked it with the letter J, I opened it up and I, uh, I tagged it with a uh, waypoint. Also, these waypoints were me using Eyes of Ender from the base. Uh, I traveled down this direction. Here, it changed directions. I went here, and then it told me to go backwards. I went here, and here is the end portal right there. So if you're using the channel emote seed like I am, uh, D underscore D, the end portal should be right here. All right, let me get rid of all these uh, these waypoints as well so they're not bothering us. There we go. All right, so underground dragon number one. I have a slime crossbow. The uh, bow limb is made out of blue slime crystal so that it reloads faster. I have a manulin tough tool rod for cold-blooded and for the DPS for the damage. I have a dense, or no, I have an osmium extra piece for dense and well-established. And then uh, I tag this guy with a diamond for the extra durability. And then uh, slammed it with redstone for haste so that it fires or reloads faster. And uh, then I have one reinforcement modifier on it so far. I'm working on making this guy unbreakable. The uh, ammo is a manulin bolt. So I made the arrow core, the arrow shaft out of dragon bone for splitting two. The reason why I did this is because sometimes when you fire a bolt, it splits into three bolts. Since the dragons have a pretty large hitbox, sometimes all three of the bolts hit at the same time. I've seen numbers go up to uh, 60, I, I'm pretty sure I saw a 99 at one point. Uh, so splitting two, amazing, because it, it ends up firing multiple bolts at the same time. The uh, I took the dragon bone shaft, put it down, and I cast manulin on top of it, which uh, at, turns it into a bolt and adds the uh, insatiable modifier to it, plus ups the damage because manulin is pretty high. Uh, the first modifiers that I went to was of course diamond. Uh, of course it 
increases the ammo, not just the durability, because it's not durability, it's ammo. It increases the ammo, so you don't have to repair it as often. You get more bolts per uh, manual and bolt. So diamond went first, and then I slammed it full of lapis for luck, because that's what we need looting, right? And then after that, I slammed it full of quartz for sharpness uh, to raise the demo, uh, demo, to raise the uh, damage, sorry, to raise the damage up to 1863. So this is pretty cool. There's one more upgrade that I'm going to do for the crossbow, which is uh, I'm going to replace the uh, bow limb with pink slime because it has a 0.3 reload time. And that 0.3 reload time makes it fully automatic. It's exactly what I did in my previous run of Enigmatica 2. So, uh, yeah, they, and then if you guys want to know about the dragon armor, it's just the scales from Overworld Dragons, and then I enchanted it, and I got lucky with protection, fire protection, unbreaking. So let's go ahead, and uh, now we can actually talk about this. Oh, and I'm trying one thing. I have chunk loaded every single one of these dragon dens because I want to see if uh, I can increase my odds of uh, getting dragon eggs because the dragons uh, I read in the wiki are determined by uh, the Minecraft days, their uh, ability to lay eggs. So the older the dragon, the higher the chance of it dra dropping a, a dragon egg. So I have that. Also, I have the automatic torch that I never talked about. You right-click this guy, and whenever it detects a dark spot, it will put it down a torch for you. So I use this specifically for underground dragons so that I don't have to light the area up. I can just jump around and attack, and this guy will put the torches down for me so that there's no extra mob spawns. And then, of course, that's blocks of coal, uh, iron bars. Super, super simple, and you find these everywhere. Okay, so enough rambling, let's break in through here and see where the dragon is first. There we go, he's angry. Let's see, are we at the top? We are at the top. Ooh! There he is, he's flying. Oh, he's right. Get line of sight. Ooh, you're a beefy boy. 92, see? That's what I'm talking about. Boom, 62. Oh wow, was that already half-life? Boom, 93. Boom. Got him. Look at that. And that's how you take out underground dragons. Oh, that was a compressed <laughs> compressed one. Whoops. All right, so let me use the sword to hop around. Light this baby up so that we are not interrupted by mob spawns. All right, let's see what we have from our first underground dragon. Remember, uh, you have to right-click with an open hand on your hotbar. Come on. Mother of Dragons. There we go, guys. Yes. Dragon Egg Gray. We have our first Dragon Egg. And the magnet just rips everything towards us. Whoa, that was a Dragon's Fire Stage 4. I thought they have to be Stage 5 to drop eggs. So let me look at everything that's inside these chests. And I will cut... From this point, uh, also future dens, I will cut and only show stuff that is really awesome. There we go, tiny pile of plutonium. This is important. If I pick this up, I will be radiated and I will start taking radioactive uh, damage, radiation damage. So what I have already prepared in advance, let me ditch the dragon stuff real quick. And then uh, off camera, of course, I can drop the stuff that is useless, like the charred stone and whatever. 
Uh, but I wanted to show you guys this, the containment box. The containment box is made, I don't have a bookmark for it. Containment box is made this way. It is a chest surrounded by lead item casings. Uh, makes a box that you can open up and put radioactive material inside. What I'm going to do is open up my extended inventory hotbar switch to my hazmat suit. Now I am uh, protected from radiation. I can pick up the tiny pile of plutonium. I can open up my containment box and I can put my tiny pile of plutonium inside this box. And now I am safe. I can switch back to my awesome OP dragon armor and I did not get irradiated. What I think is kind of funny though, is uh, you can look inside this box and not be irradiated. It's only when you pick it up and put it in your inventory. But I think it's kind of funny that like you can open up the box and look inside of it and it does not deal radi radiation damage. <laughs> Uranium 238, that's awesome. Californium 252, is this the Weezer album? Bro, much respect. Curium 243, another tiny pile of plutonium. Plutonium ingot, nice. All right, so here, let me show you guys the example of using the scanner, because that would make sense, right? To show you guys how the scanner works. I have it set to range and I have it set to scanning for oak chests. So when you scan this guy by right clicking, it highlights through the walls all of the oak chests, which inside of an underground dragon's den, there's a bunch of chests. That last one, I mined up 20 of them. So if you're walking on the surface and you hear a dragon yell, roar, uh, if you look at my radar, it shows the broken sword which is the weakness. You'll get this debuff when a dragon roars. And then uh, you bust out your scanner up top, scan the ground, boom. And then when you look down, you see all of the chests and you know exactly where to dig, which I just vain mined my way down. I know you're not supposed to dig down in Minecraft, but I really don't have that many experiences. So, uh, and then scanning uh, also uses RF, as you can see, energy down there. Uh, the way you recharge it is you just put it inside of your CESU. I've tested that, it does work. And I'll show you guys later walking over the uh, nuclear reactor that I built. It can also uh, recharge the scanner when you walk over it. So and let's see, beefy boy here should be right here. And I'm purposefully not vein mining so that here it is. Whoa, boy! The hitbox showed, so I might not even have to dig my way through. He'll come to me. Yeah. You look up top. <laughs> so let me go ahead and dig my way through with my unbreakable pickaxe. There we go. And I'll hop through again. Jeez, it's, this place is full. Phew. What? Aren't you dead? Why did you roar? A compressed creeper? Are you serious? Why am I hearing a Is there another dragon? That would be the coolest thing ever. It, it might be a bug though, it is modded Minecraft. All right, so let's loot this guy and see what we get. We get interrupted. Boom. Stage five fire and uh, no egg this time, but that's fine. Curium 243, uranium 238, another plutonium ingot, 
Californium 252. Californium 252. Another Plutonium 238, which uh, I took the risk and uh, it is not radioactive. Uh, okay, I lied. I mined the chest because I, I couldn't see it. I didn't see it. <laughs> it scared me. <laughs> Uranium 238. All right, so that was Underground Dragon number two. Let's go ahead and get rid of one and two and go ahead towards Underground Dragon three. Let's see, we're on the roof, I think. Let's dig down safely so we don't fall right in. There it is. Let's find our dragon. Boom, and you're gone, baby. All right, let's loot this guy. Dragon scales and no egg. Neptunium 236. Californium 250. There we go. We can make another uh, Californium RTG. All right. We have three down and we have four more to go. So I had to jump back to the base to empty out all of the fat loot that we got. Uh, while I'm here, let me show you guys. The scanner has uh, charge used on it. We could walk over this guy and it will fully uh, charge the scanner. That's how you, you charge it. Uh, if you don't make a charge pad, you can stick it in directly in here. And then it also works with the uh, CESU, the uh, tier two, this guy right here. It works in here as well, I tested it. And so let's go ahead and we can jump back into the fray. Uh, Underground Dragon number four. So let me check while it's loading. I see you. Can I hit you from here? I can. Just a little bit further away. Great thing about crossbows, it has range. Super range. So let's go ahead and open this up because I can already tell that the, uh, the bolts are not reaching. go. Looks like it's a black dragon. Yeah, some of the spinning is hitting the block. But there we go. Took it down. Okay, so let's go ahead and loot this bad boy. Let's see, where are you? There you are. Fire Dragon. Scales, flush. More scales. And stage five. Again, no egg. So my experiment looks like it is failing. Oop, we got a sneaky plutonium over here in the corner, but we know it's not radioactive, the nuclear craft plutonium. Oop, tiny pile of plutonium. This one is radioactive. Californium 250, another one. Can there be any more bats in this cave? Tiny pile of plutonium. Another tiny pile of plutonium. That's three for this one den. All right, let's go underground dragon five. There we go. 
And again, let's find the edge. <laughs> Your kid is pure awesome. That is true. Ooh, pimp slap. this guy so I can eat. Fifty-one. Thirty-five. Dragon egg. Another gray one. Wow, that's two gray ones. I was hoping for two different colors. It looks like gray is going to be our color. Go ahead and ditch some stuff. Cobblestone. Oh, another egg. Charred stone. Two eggs. An emerald and a gray. Nice. So we're up to three eggs. Plutonium 238. Uranium 238. And a creeper. Neptunium 236. Okay, let's head towards Underground Dragon 6, and then we have a special Underground 7. Ooh, we got a green one. away. Gunpowder I don't need. There. Move this off. Let's go. Five scales. Let's get rid of that. We don't need zombie heads. We'll get rid of the Imperium for right now. And it does not look like we got an egg. Californium 250. Okay, we are back with our final and most special underground dragon. Uh, also, I went ahead and I cleaned out all my inventory, got some new foods ready. Uh, here is the fourth armor set and uh, each color of fairy that I have enslaved from a fairy village. Uh, also, if you guys wanted to know how to easily find out what you are missing just search not and it tells you all of the foods that you have not eaten yet so with that let's go ahead and i can show you guys this super special underground dragon that i found while looking for the ender portal i cannot believe this when i was looking for the ender portal using the ender pearls uh, i vein mined and we are exactly next to an underground dragon. This is the underground dragon nest, and this was the ender portal that I was looking for. So we found the end portal, and right next to it is an underground dragon. Uh, what's even scarier is you can see him through these leaves, and I didn't realize it until I looked down. <laughs> it scared me. All right, so let's loot this guy is our final dragon. Oh, it says right there, fire dragon, stage four female. Oh yeah, bronze egg. And a red egg, there we go. Yes. 
And let's go ahead and unclaim these chunks. Oh yeah. Bronze and red dragon eggs. Plutonium, wow, plutonium 238 and a 250 in one chest. Another 250, nice. Plutonium. Another 250, that's three in one den. All right, guys, we are back and I have sorted the inventories. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention that I thought of, which makes total sense, be sure to use the scanner when you're inside the underground cave as well, because inside the underground dragon's nest, there's a lot of chests that are hidden inside the walls. So uh, I, I actually found another Californium and another Plutonium in the walls, just looking for it, which I turned these guys uh, into the RTGs already. So we have another 6,000 RF a tick passive just from these... Uh, uh, these bad boys right here. 750 on the Californium, 250 on the Plutonium. Nuts on uh, passive power gen. Also 10 Plutonium. I have an enchanted book which has sieve efficiency 4 and mending. That is a really hard choice. And then I found a enchanted book with holding. Here we have all of the skulls and we made a total of 5 dragon eggs. So this episode, I'm not going to be hatching any of the baby dragons. That will be next episode. So be sure to tune back in uh, for how to hatch baby dragons, which uh, it'll be super fun. We'll have five of them running around at the same time. Also, I put all of the actually additions crystals in here. This one is important, the Empowered Palos crystal. I did mention I was going to talk about the Ender Pearls. This greenhouse glass by actually additions requires empowered payless crystals. It makes two of them. So I went ahead and I made four of these guys because I wanted to see uh, how they interact with ender pearls. And uh, let's see, they're all grown. And I wanted to show you guys the difference between having ender lilies on endstone and ender lilies on uh, endstone but under the greenhouse glass the difference between growth factors is crazy. So here we go. All of them are harvested. All of them that are un that are not under the greenhouse glass are going to grow in the same speed at the same speed except for these four. They'll randomly do this where they will pop into full uh, fully harvestable immediately. It's like they bone meal them. It's it's amazing. Also, I mentioned that uh, I was going to talk about how to make endstone. I figured out a neat workaround. Let's see, we need 16 more to finish. Let's see, do I have, I have nine. So let's go ahead and make it a 16. We can drop the ender pearls in here. And then let me grab glowstone 16. And I need a bucket, just one, thank you. And then the way I did it, let's see, I have 30 buckets, perfect. The stone barrel from X Nilo, stone barrel, recipe, dirt cheap, obsidian and stone. What you do, bucket, bucket, glowstone. Right click and stone. So you can turn lava like this into end stone. All right, there we have our 16 new end stone. And I no longer need the industrial hemp from immersive engineering. And as you can see, this front row grows like crazy. The uh, industrial hemp, I wanted to grow some of it so I could make uh, sales for the windmill. So I decided to make a windmill off camera just to power the improved blast furnace and the improved coke oven. No big deal. There we go. And Ooh. 
Whoop. And here we go, another row of ender lilies. Nice. And yeah, just so that you guys can see, this first row goes nuts under the uh, greenhouse class. So if you want even more, go ahead and use all of your uh, payless crystals, your powered payless crystals to make these this greenhouse class. Uh, but I really don't need this many ender pearls. I'm gonna harvest from time to time when I run by, but uh, that's that's how I got my ender pearls. So let's head to the end and uh, let's take out the dragon. I have my air charm ready, crossbow and bolt and chimichangas. Let's put chimichangas on our main bar, just in case. And let's head to the end portal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I left the uh, eyes of ender that I needed here. Oh, let me do this. Let's go. And let's go defeat the ender dragon. Of course it spawns me out here in the middle of nowhere. But that's the reason why I needed the ender dragon. go let's go wait a miss Got it. I did bring vials, right? Yeah. Dragon's Breath, just in case. I can't think of anything that I need Dragon's Breath for right now, but uh, since he's being a little... Ender Dragon. Ooh, Draconium Dust. Alright. 
You better not fall in the portal, homie. Whoa. Where'd the heart go? Ah, it went into my inventory. Oh, wow. Eight dragon scales. I wish that FTP continuum gave me eight. <laughs> All right. One like this, like that. Torch. Boop. Boop. Next generation. Dragon egg and a dragon heart, which can be replicated with 2,000 millibuckets of UU. Nice. Alrighty, let's see if I can make this work. There we go. Sometimes it just flat out does not work for me. Nice. So let me cut here. Actually, there <laughs> we already have an end city. Is, is that, yeah, it is. Nice. I don't even need the cut. <laughs> no editing this time, guys. I will grab one of these dudes. There we go. Hello. Dragon head. Okay. Let's go, let's go. So happy this was so easy. Easy mode. Boom. Elytra. What's in here? Iridium. Oh, hi. Did not see you there. And... Inori. So let's go upstairs. And let's sleep, just in case it's super dark in the video. Over here, I have stuff ready. Uh, six RE batteries, a regular electronic circuit, two advanced circuits, oak wood planks. Let's go. 110 levels, wow. So first we need to make the bat pack. That's six RE batteries, a basic uh, electronic basic control circuit and a regular wood plank makes the bat pack and let's see oh steel casings right here and jet pack yay and let's see there should be armor for this right jet packs required for the quantum suit body armor oh you can attach it with a attachment plate it's like duct tape. Wow, it requires iridium. Nuts. Can you attach it to anything, though? I could attach it to my sleeping bag. <laughs> A jetpack on my sleeping bag. Nice. And let's see. We have the anvil up here. Let me remove my cosmetic armor. Hello. Let's see. What does it have? Fire protection 4, unbreaking 3. I'd like to have a better chest plate than this, but it's fine. That will give it mending. All right. And duct tape the jetpack. Yep, there we go. Jetpack baby. All right, we have knocked out all of IC2. This is the last quest, the jetpack. All of IC2 is done. The, uh, oh nice, it gives you a little green check mark for having everything done. Immersive engineering, I stopped here because uh, we need to get into mechanism to finish uh, this row. Uh, the next thing that we're going to be doing is hatching baby dragons. After that, it's either going to be forestry, I really wanna make a farm, or we can go with nuclear craft I really do want to make a fission reactor, and I want to use the uh, isotope separators to make my own Californium. So let's finish off this episode with some loot chests. Maybe we can get super lucky and get even more passive power. We have enhanced building guide. We have block of emerald. 
mud bricks. Well, General Tso's chicken, eaten, too bad. Ice pillar, bricks, giant sequia door, faucet resonator, purple crystal shulker box, looks nice. Growth accelerator, cool, from Mystical Agriculture. Augments, we have resonant servo, that's pretty sweet. We have sweet potato pie, not eaten yet, there we go. We have block of cold coke, chiseled, how silly. <laughs> Another enhanced building guide, lava wood, and a golden egg. This golden egg is pretty silly. When you put it down, I believe it has a timer set to it. And after a while, a little copy of you popped up. Oh, what a punk. I had no idea that it could blow up stuff inside a chunk loaded area. That is kind of, kind of, <laughs> that kind of makes me angry. I'm glad it didn't take out too much. And why is my character bald? You have no face. Ah, that's frustrating. I would have been very, very angry, because that's the whole reason why I chunk load stuff. Oh well, I need to clean up now, and I have a mini-me running around. Thank you so much for joining me today. Smash like if you feel like I earned it, and click on my guy here to subscribe for more modded Minecraft every Sunday at 11am. Boom!